Hi, I'm Nathan Ritter from CardioGage.com. This video is about fish oil. What type is best? The fish oil omega-3 world is a huge subject. Some possible benefits are a decreased chance of heart attack, decreased blood pressure, decreased inflammation, and some hoped for but quite unproven benefits are a decreased chance of dementia, depression, and cancer. In this video, I'm going to focus on the cardiovascular possibilities with fish oil. So there are numerous ways to get your omega-3s. In this video, I'm going to focus on fish oil supplements. There are different ways to take it. You can get EPA, DHA fish oil. So that's the usual fish oil. It's got both EPA and DHA in it, which are both omega-3s. And this would be a typical omega-3 product that you'd get online. It's got 500 milligrams of EPA and DHA in each capsule. And it's pretty affordable. Another way you can get fish oil is it could be EPA only. This isn't as common. So the DHA is not in there. Um, there's some research that shows that DHA can increase the LDL some. And also some of the studies I'll talk about later, they use just EPA only fish oil and it seemed to work a little better. The price on that is similar. You can get fish oil as a prescription. Some drug companies found that they could tweak the fish oil a little bit and patent it. I'm not really sure that that made a big difference in the fish oil product itself. It made it be able to be concentrated more than the over-the-counter um, versions, but whether or not it's more effective, nobody could really say for sure. Um, this was the old standby prescription fish oil called Lovaza. It's generic now. That doesn't make it cheap, though. Um, the cash price for that over here, 85 bucks for a one-month supply, basically. That'd be 120 capsules. Two capsules twice a day would be the kind of high-dose fish oil, and um, that would be a standard dose recommended for triglycerides or to decrease cardiac risk. So you can see that's uh, still a prescription and still not cheap. Um, another prescription fish oil is this stuff, Vasepa. That's EPA only. Again, they adjusted it chemically a little bit, so it goes by this chemical name, Icosapent ethyl but it's absorbed similarly to just regular EPA. So there's not a humongous difference really between icosapen ethyl and regular EPA, as far as I can tell, over-the-counter stuff. But anyway, the drug company has a, uh, has a patent on this. So the cash price is just like, whoa, $350 a month. Ouch. Insurance company will sometimes pay for it depending on the situation, but oftentimes the price is still really high with the copay. So still pretty much a massive bummer how expensive it is because it's patented. A lot of people like krill oil, and it's not as well studied as fish oil. Um, it has some antioxidants in there. It might be better absorbed. There's a decreased chance for mercury poisoning with it because the krill's at the bottom of the food chain and doesn't really consume anything with mercury in it. And it... Uh, it's kind of got a cool red color, which is really appealing, but and in terms of whether or not it's actually proven to be better than fish oil, that's totally up in the air. So some people will take krill oil instead of fish oil with the same goals, basically. Another variant on fish oil is cod liver oil. That's where they take the liver out of the codfish and I guess melt it and then, then take the oil out of that. And that has the advantage of having a lot of vitamin A and vitamin D in it. It's really nutritious in that regard. And those vitamins can help you with other things. So it's kind of a, you know, multiple pronged attack on stuff. Um, it typically has less omega-3 in it. So it's got 240 milligrams of omega-3 in each capsule, which is substantially less than a typical fish oil product. Um, another benefit of this is that it's thought to possibly decrease inflammation for people with rheumatoid arthritis and help them. So if a person has rheumatoid arthritis and they want to take a fish oil, it might be a multiple combo to take cod liver oil. And the cost is pretty good there. Not too expensive. And of course, um, another way to get fish oil is to consume fish. Wild salmon has a lot of oil in it and a uh, serving of that will have like 1,500 milligrams of EPA and DHA. So that's uh, quite a healthy portion of omega-3. So let's talk some about the benefits of fish oil that I mentioned above. So can it decrease the chance for heart attack? And if you're um, a fish oil nerd and you want to read about that, I think this is a really good article, a great place to start. It's a review article. 
and it was published by the American Heart Association, so which is a big, uh, legit organization. And they looked at basically all the studies that they could come up with and looked at them all together, 13 trials that were randomized where they used uh, fish oil. And they, what they came up with, the conclusion was that marine omega-3 supplementation, so fish oil, it decreases the risk for myocardial infarction or heart attack and other stuff. So their review article indicated that fish oil works. And this is a really um, kind of an awesome um, figure from that paper, which I think is quite informative. It's hard to understand, but basically on this side, it's good, helps. On this side of the line would be bad. And the studies show uh, are shown here, like whether or not it's good or bad. So the best study would be like this one. It's the farthest to the left. And then the next best one would be this one, which showed the fish oil worked and decreased chance of stroke, heart attack, all that stuff. And these other studies are kind of like this one. It's like right in the middle. And in this study, fish oil didn't seem to help. Well, interestingly, um, these two studies here, the ones that were shown to be most helpful, this one, Jealous, awesome name. And then this one over here, Reduce It. These two studies used EPA-only fish oil, not EPA DHA fish oil. So that's a substantial difference. Um, all of these studies, I believe all of them, used uh, EPA and DHA. It's just these two outliers used EPA only. So that would be a reason to make you think that EPA only was better than EPA and DHA. Do me a favor, if you're finding the video helpful, hit like, subscribe, and share for more content. On to other benefits. So how about does it decrease blood pressure? And this is a retro article here from 1993, taking it way back. So these guys looked at a total of 31 studies, and they found that looking at all of those, that the pressure went down a little bit with fish oil. So in total, regardless of the dose, it went down minus 3 on the top number and down um, minus 1.5 millimeters of mercury on the bottom number. Their conclusion was that there is a dose response effect of fish oil on blood pressure. And bottom line here is that if you took four grams of fish oil per day, and that would typically be EPA DHA, then your blood pressure would go down by about three over 1.5 millimeters of mercury. So that's equivalent in my experience to about 2.5 milligrams of lisinopril. And to give you some perspective, 40 milligrams of lisinopril, that's the maximum dose. And that would decrease a person's blood pressure by 15 over 10. So if you take like a really solid dose of fish oil, four grams a day, you're going to get this decrease in pressure on average. Whereas if you take 40 milligrams of lisinopril, you get a lot bigger decrease. And basically fish oil is a weak blood pressure medication. To give you another frame of reference, if a person lost six pounds, then their pressure would go down by about three points on the top number. So that's another way to look at it. More benefits. So fish oil is thought to decrease inflammation in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, but it hasn't really been conclusively shown to decrease inflammation for sure. It would have made sense if the CRP was reported in these recent trials I'm going to discuss next, but it wasn't. So I eh, can't really conclude at this point that fish oil decreases inflammation, but it does seem to help people with rheumatoid arthritis, which implies that it might. So I want to shift gears now, and I want to talk about um, EPA only versus EPA DHA. And that's in these two trials, the reduce it trial, and then the strength trial. Um, I'd like to talk briefly about these. So reduce it, they used EPA only fish oil. That's the Vasepa stuff that I mentioned before that's patented. It's, um, the study was funded by a drug company. So we always have to worry about that. I have a lot of respect for Dr. Bot. I think he's a really smart guy and he cares about doing a good job. So I, I basically trust the results of the study. But if you're super skeptical about drug companies, then you might flush the result. Anyway, 
uh, what they did was they took people with um, heart disease or high risk and people with high triglycerides. They weren't super high. They could be just like 135 to 499. So 135 is pretty close to normal, frankly, and 499 is mild to moderately elevated. They showed that VASEPA decreased the risk of an event, of a cardiac event, by an absolute 5%. So the relative decrease was greater, but what we care about is an absolute risk, and that was a decrease in 5%. And to give you some perspective on that, that's about the same amount of reduction in risk you'd get with a torvastatin 10 to 20 milligrams per day. I should mention that this was added to a statin. So all these people were on statin, which obviously makes you wonder what would have happened if um, you know, you used this medication, this fish oil variant, in people who weren't on a statin at all. But anyway, it was all added to a statin. And uh, so that was a pretty awesome result, you know, decrease absolute um, risk by 5%. So there was a competing trial, basically. Um, another drug company had their thing that they were doing, and it was an EPA DHA variant called Epinova. And they just stuck some other, like, molecule on the side of the fatty acid chain and, you know, made their own patentable product. And it's uh, e EPA DHA product. They were basically doing the same thing that was done in the reduce trial, but it bombed. So that's the strength trial. And they had to call off the study. That's when they did it in January, 2020. Basically, they just said it didn't work. They got, I don't know, halfway through it. There was no indication of benefit. So low likelihood of demonstrating a benefit to patients. Bummer. What I take away from that is the EPA only study, it did, it did way better than the EPA DHA study. You can't know for sure. It wasn't head to head, but I think it's pretty compelling that at this point anyway, with what we've got, that EPA only is better than EPA DHA. It's not all fun and games, of course. There's plenty of side effects with fish oil. Um, if anybody's taken it, they know. It can lead to typically minor bleeding, bloody nose, that type of thing, one to two percent of the time. Atrial fibrillation, which is a touch scary to think that it could increase that. That's a typically non-life-threatening rhythm problem, and it could increase the occurrence of that by about 1% over a period of a few years. Excessive mercury is always a thought, although it seems like kind of we've got a handle on that, and if you use reputable manufacturers that you'll, you'll get away without having trouble with that. The heartburn and burping, I certainly have that myself, and, uh, and then diarrhea. And then, of course, you know, tons of other stuff, whatever it is that happens to pop up for a given person. So the bottom line here is I am now recommending EPA-only fish oil for my patients with atherosclerosis, so blood vessel disease, who want to aggressively reduce their risk. And obviously, they're willing to take it. So a lot of people are fed up with all the medications and pills, and they don't want to bother with it. You know, in fact, that's probably the majority of the people, frankly. Um the dose that I would use, um, or that I am using, is 2 grams twice a day of EPA-only fish oil. And if the insurance pays, I will use the Vasepa, um, just because it can be cheaper for the patient to use that. But if it's not cheaper to get the Vasepa than the supplement, and then I'll recommend a supplement um, EPA. And an example of that is, I showed it over here. I don't get any money from these guys at all, but it looks like a nice product. Um, my patients have been fine with it, and it has a lot of EPA in it, tons of it. So if you take two of these guys twice a day, I'm sorry, four of these guys, you take four caps twice a day, then you're going to get the, about the same amount of EPA that they got in the Reduce a trial. And then I will, um, for people who are without disease, you know, they don't have atherosclerosis, but they're really motivated to reduce their risk. You know, they're super jacked up to do whatever they can to decrease risk for heart disease. For example, in people who have a strong family history of heart disease, I do think that taking EPA only fish oil is appropriate. And you might say, well, they had people with high triglycerides in the studies, but there was some indication that the effect of the EPA was independent of its effect on triglycerides. That was apparent in a different study that I mentioned in one of my other videos, the evaporate trial. It looks like EPA fish oil is really good stuff and um, can decrease risk. So I'm pretty excited about that. 
In spite of this encouraging info on fish oil, your best bets for overall great health are clean eating and routine exercise more so than any supplement. Thanks for watching and see you next time.